scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. One time the prophets were eating and they said there was death in the pot. And then he took some leaves, the prophet now, and just sprinkled it and said whatever it is that would kill has been cleansed listen you see traditional practice we come from um, many many regions here and tradition especially in Africa prides in the ability to have preserved many traditional or occultic practices for many generations so when you meet an old man whether a herbalist a spiritualist or some kind of fetish person he would usually lead you and tell you a long history of certain practices they may have done alongside the benefit it seemed to have created the point i'm trying to communicate is that this earth and this territory wherein we live and function is shrouded in mysteries and God does not want believers to be in ignorance are we together yes it is the job of the man of God to walk in partnership with the Spirit of God and the Word of God to help believers come into a higher and more superior dimension of spiritual intelligence do you know as you grow spiritually you would begin to see the predictability of life and even victory. You will see that that which before now looked have hazard like a product of circumstances. Now you can gain, you can have predictability to your Christian experience. Hallelujah. The Bible clearly tells us a few very important things about this God that we serve, the God of heaven, the God of the universe. And I want to start by just making reference to two or three attributes about God as we begin to build our case um, around this teaching. Number one, the Bible reveals that God Almighty is the creator, the owner, and the ruler of everything. Please write it down. The Bible reveals that God Almighty is the creator, the owner, and the ruler of everything. Not just the heavens and the earth. He is the creator, the owner, and the ruler of everything. Genesis 1 verse 1. Genesis 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created. Who created? In the beginning, not from the beginning. In the beginning, God created. So we see that God is creator. Psalm 121 from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 121 from verse 1 and 2. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help it's a question verse 2 it says my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth so we know that heaven and earth was made and it was the Lord God the Creator that made heaven 
and earth first chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11 we're looking at a few scriptures to establish a few important attributes of god it says thine O lord is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is mine thine is the kingdom or is thine thine is the kingdom O lord and thou art exalted as head above all it says all that is in the heaven and in the earth it belongs to you are we learning now so god is the absolute creator owner and ruler of all things revelation chapter 4 from verse 10 and 11 revelations 4 10 and 11 the four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying 11 now thou art worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power he says for thou has created how many things for thou has created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created that means the creation is still happening the ones that were created and the ones that have still been created is for your pleasure so fact number one that god almighty is creator owner and ruler of everything i know there are all kinds of debates and contentions as to the earth and all kinds of teachings across the globe but the bible says it for a fact that when it has to do with creation and ownership there are not many people who own the earth or the heavens god almighty is the creator the owner and the ruler of everything number two fact number two that we need to come to terms with as we discuss this series is that god is the exclusive owner of all power please write it down god is the exclusive owner of all power god is the exclusive owner he owns all power second chronicles chapter 20 we'll read three to six second chronicles chapter 20 please and Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. Verse 4. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord and before the new court. Verse 6. And said, O Lord God, of our fathers art thou not god in heaven it says thou and rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen it says and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand you god is the exclusive owner of all power psalm 62 and verse 11 psalm 62 and verse 11 god had spoken once twice have i heard this that power belongeth to god somebody say power belongs to god let the devil hear it remind him one more time power belongs to god now listen very carefully these are very important foundations so i've said two things that god almighty is the creator owner and ruler of everything that includes the earth that includes the heavens hallelujah and i hope you know that in ancient times the word heaven was used to communicate the non-material dimension of god's creation it is not just limited to the atmosphere above man because heaven is not up heaven is a spiritual location are we together now so the word heavens was used to capture holistically all the dimensions that are invisible to the seeing of man 
so when you say heaven you don't mean the clouds you mean that realm and dimension that is real and exists but it's not visible to the optical eyes colossians 1 and verse 16 colossians 1 16 let me just buttress on that point it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible you see it now so he created invisible things invisible does not mean unreal the concept of being invisible simply means the optical eyes unassisted cannot see it but it does not mean it is not there are we together very very important now please let's go to genesis chapter one genesis is called theologically the book of beginnings genesis chapter one we'll begin our reading from verse 26 for sake of time this is the first time we would see the expression let us until that time everything that had to do with creation was and god said and god said but now we get to verse 26 the bible says and god said let us make man in our own image i hope you know please look up i hope you know man was not the first of god's creation there were other things that were created before the arrival of man in fact according to scripture the first element that we see revealed was water is that true Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth then he says verse 2 now and the earth that's the first time we see what was on earth that's what I'm trying to say that the earth was void and formless and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters so we see water then verse 3 we see light and from the earth in partnership with water and light several things started coming up are we together i just wanted you to know that now back to verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness i've taught you here that the image of god is a spiritual quality the glory of god the essence of god and then the likeness of god means to function like him two hands two legs are we together yeah and then he says let them have dominion let them have dominion the word man there is the Hebrew word Adam Adam is not the name of an individual necessarily Adam simply means dark earth one who came from this territory please keep that scripture it says let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth now when you see the bible says fish of the sea fowl of the air he's not limiting it to that very creature fish and fowl are we together the essence of that communication if you study from the hebrew rendition is God said, let them have dominion over the sea. That means the realm and the kingdom of the waters. Let them have dominion over the air. Are we together? Those creatures were just picked as the creatures that represent those that habitat. Are we together? The fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth we're reading to 28 verse 27 now the bible says so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air and every living thing that moveth upon the earth hallelujah let them have dominion was a handover service a handover ceremony 
I began my teaching by describing these attributes of God that both the heavens and the earth and everything created was created by God and for him, the exclusive owner. But here we see God making a statement when he brought man to the earth, this dimension of his kingdom, he made a very interesting statement. He said, let them have dominion. That means I transfer certain privileges and responsibility onto them. This is very important. Dominion is a very important word. Most believers do not understand the concept of dominion. Dominion, please write it down. I'm not necessarily um, giving us all the Hebrew rendition and all of that, but just write for your understanding. The word dominion means the right to govern please write the word dominion means number one the right to govern it means sovereign control it means authority the word dominion means the right to govern sovereign control it means authority now we go back to genesis 1 26 let them have the right to govern let them have sovereign control let them have authority are we together this is very very important now um let me just digress a bit and explain for you the difference between power and authority until you understand the dynamics of power and authority you can never truly understand dominion we'll deal with it when we're looking at part two in details but now at least just to get all of us um, at the same page what does it mean to have power power means the capacity to influence or change please write the capacity to influence or change power also means the force that compels compliance power means number one the capacity to influence or change so when you say I have power it means I have the capacity to influence or to change it also means I have the force that compels compliance. Notice, please look up. God never told man at the beginning, let them have power. He said, let them have dominion, meaning authority. What is authority? Please write. What is authority? The word authority means, number one, the right to represent. Authority means the right to represent. Authority means the legitimate ground to allow power to function. The legitimate ground to allow power to function. the legitimate ground to allow power to function. That means you can have power, but if you do not have authority, even though you have the force that creates compliance, but your activity can be illegal. I'll give you an instance. What is the difference between the armed robber's gunshot and a military man's gunshot? Both of them have power. Is that true? They have power invested in a gun. But why do you clap for one when he shoots and you arrest the other when he shoots? Because one has more than power. He has authority. Are you, are you getting me now? He has authority vested to him by the government, the law of the land. While the other one has power but does not have authority. Number two, the military man has jurisdiction. Whereas the armed robber does not have jurisdiction. Authority, like you will be learning, cannot be authority 
unless and until there is jurisdiction you cannot be ruler without a predefined jurisdiction you need to understand these terminologies because it is important for us to know the frame of our dominion we were not given dominion everywhere God listed very specifically the jurisdiction of our authority is someone learning now so power just talks of that force that compels compliance but authority is the legitimate ground to use power if you have power and you do not have authority then you are operating it in an unauthorized way this is very important now authority is what makes administering power legal or legitimate you need to know this about authority it is authority that makes administering power legal or legitimate power without authority does not have boundaries power without authority cannot be efficient authority is what tames the use of power hallelujah now a few more things about power and authority that god gave man write this down god gave man authority without conditions but he will never give man power without conditions write it down please man did not need to do or be anything to be given authority by god when even before man realized himself that verdict came let them have sovereign authority but when it has to do with accessing power there are conditions god gave man authority without conditions but when it has to do with accessing power there are conditions isn't it amazing if you have authority and you do not have power you cannot be effective is that true because it will take power to make what you have said or your representation efficient so God gave man authority you are now my legitimate caretaker upon the earth pay attention you're going to learn the Bible says in Psalm 115 verse 16 please give it to us Psalm 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heaven of heavens are the Lord's is that in your Bible he says but the earth hath he given to the children of men now watch this do you see here immediately that the dominion of the earth was given to men I'm soon going to describe to you what condition you must satisfy to be called a man you know in our world when we say you are a man it means you are weak I'm going to teach you that when they say you are a man is a special honor given to you there are many spirit entities that cannot be men hmm. are we together the earth has he given to the children of men in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 he said behold I give you power it's an inaccurate rendition sadly by King James give us amplified and you will see it corrected there in amplified he said behold I have given you authority and then power to trample upon serpents scorpions physical and mental strength and ability over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any way harm you hallelujah so man as the zenith of God's creation was given a gift and a blessing by God that gift is dominion and authority the ability to stand instead of the maker and manage this dominion this this realm 
of his kingdom very very powerful and very important so what makes you a man just to state it so that we know those who are talking for you to be a man there are two things that you must have listen carefully for you to be a man there are two things you must have number one you must first be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man you must first be a spirit number two the place of residence of that spirit must be a material or a physical body you must be a spirit and that spirit must be domiciled trapped in a material body are we together and then in addition that spirit in that body must have what we call the mind the interface between the spirit and the body the mind containing the will emotions intellect all those solical faculties you are not a man if you are a spirit alone you are not a man if you are a body alone you are not a man if you are a mind alone there has to be that coexistence of a spirit living in a body and then having the faculties that connect that entity to this dual realm of the spirit and the physical realm you have to see that the design of man was a very intricate design no other entity had that kind of design that a spirit is trapped in a physical material body and then having a mind containing the will emotions and intellect i hope you know that all other physical creatures on earth have bodies but it does not qualify them to be called men you never call a goat a man are we together as much as science talks about chimpanzees and monkeys and evolution you never call a monkey a man what then is the difference that coexistence the spirit living in a mortal or material body connected by these solical faculties of the mind that's what qualifies any entity to be called man are we clear on that that means to know who is legal and who is illegal upon the earth listen very carefully the bible never restricted other entities from roaming about around the earth provided they are willing to submit to man there is no record in the bible where other non-human entities were prohibited from the earth they were allowed but the condition is that they must submit to the authority of man are, are we building now i'm taking it easy because we need to understand this to know the implication of that statement that means any other spirit that is not trapped in a human body that tries to exercise dominion and does not satisfy the condition to be called man is doing it illegally did you get that now any spirit at all for the dominion and the exertion of authority from any spirit entity to be legal on earth it must be trapped in a physical body and it must have a mind that interfaces between the spirit and the body this is very powerful let them have dominion means the following please write let them have dominion means the following number one that man from the time god made that statement is the legal steward and the ruler in the earth let them have dominion means the following this is the implication of that prophetic statement number one that from the time god made that declaration man became and still is the legitimate steward 
and the ruler in the earth. Psalm 8 from verse 2 to 8. Man is the legitimate steward and the ruler as far as the earth is concerned. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies thou that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. We're reading to verse 8. Very quickly, please. It says, When I consider the heavens, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, not the son of man that thou visitest him? Verse 5. It says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. The word there is Elohim, a little lower than God and you have crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 thou made him to have what read with me please dominion over the works of thy hands what are the works of his hands everything that was created by him and for him are we together so god made man to have dominion over all the works of his hands thou hast put all things under his feet verse 7 Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Now, there is an addition. There's something that Paul added that I want to introduce from verse 5. Hebrews 2 from verse 5. For unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. Verse 6. It says, but in a certain place, he's making reference to Psalm 8 now, testify it, saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him, nor the son of man that thou visitest him? Next verse. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Aha. It says, thou hast crowned him with glory and honor, and did set him over the works of thy hands. Follow carefully now. Verse 8. It says, thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that, for in that he put all things in subjection under him, he left nothing that was not under him. He left nothing. That means God did not omit anything. That he would say, ah, I forgot and I made a statement. He did it intentionally. And the Bible says he did not leave anything as far as the jurisdiction of dominion is given. He did a thorough job by instructing everything to be under the feet of man. The tragedy, but now, as it is in experience, we do not yet see all things under him. Do you know what that means? That means there are disobedient entities that are refusing to obey this instruction. Is someone learning now? He's saying based on what we see in experience, there are some entities that have refused in spite of this verdict. There are entities that have refused that we will not come under the feet of this man. Remember, if you are not a man and you are on earth, the only way you can be allowed to function is that you must acknowledge the authority of the one God gave dominion to. And there are spirits who are saying we will be here and yet will not acknowledge that man. And Paul was saying there is something wrong here. There is somebody who is disobeying this divine verdict. Hallelujah. So let them have dominion means, number one, that from the time God made that declaration, man is the legal steward and the ruler in the earth. Number two, let them have dominion means nothing legal. Please write it carefully. Nothing legal can and should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and participation. Let them have dominion means, number two, nothing legal can and should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and participation. This is powerful. Nothing in the earth can happen and should happen without man's cooperation and participation. Now, I want to make a very interesting statement. Please, I want you to look up. Please look up. Please look up. Um, I'm about to correct something, and that's why I'm asking you to look up. I have studied the subject of dominion 
and I have learned from fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel and I think there is there is a statement that has been captured it has been used for many years by wonderful and well-meaning men and women of God and I can tell you by the authority of Scripture that that statement needs to be lovingly adjusted and corrected because it can be misleading that is the word permission you notice I did not use that expression there have been many thoughts by well-intentioned men and women of God in discussing the subject of dominion you would hear statements like even man has to permit God to come to the earth it is a very sincere statement but it is not scriptural now listen very carefully God well for the sake of our discussion here I would say God has authority but by the definition of authority God has absolute power God cannot have authority because authority demands that someone higher than you must give it to you are you getting this listen 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 don't just clap just understand what I'm teaching you so it, even if you say God has authority, he's safe because he can, he, that means he gave it to himself. Like he sought for one greater than him and not finding any, he swore by his name. You cannot say God has authority, classically speaking. Because authority will demand that someone higher than you will give you access and define the geography of your, of your function and supervise you. So if you really say God has authority, classically speaking, it is not a very accurate statement because it then means there is someone somewhere higher than him who gave him a predefined region. Are we together? Every time you hear the word authority, you must see jurisdiction connected to it authority over the earth authority over the earth when they make you in the secular say they make you an executive director you are not an executive director everywhere there is an office and there is a job description is that is that true you cannot get up and enter any office and say i am an executive director authority comes with jurisdiction so when people say back to what i was trying to correct um when you say god or the holy spirit or any other spirit that is not man is an illegal occupant in the earth um it is not a very it's a sincere statement but it's not scripturally and doctrinally correct because there is nowhere in scripture where other non-human inhabitants were prohibited from being around the earth their their prohibition was that they cannot act outside of their submission or their not the word submission exactly the participation with man are we together now so to teach that even man has to give god permission we've all made that mistake and there is nothing to be embarrassed about it but it is not an accurate it's not an accurate communication now I say this with profound respect and honor to all who have taught on the subject of dominion because you know every time it has to do with making adjustments and correcting sometimes when we find truth we can communicate it with such arrogance to mean look at the nonsense that all these people are saying uh -uh. I have taught you if your truth is not communicated in love what you are saying whether you are right or wrong you are wrong hallelujah let me let me just let me just digress and teach you every time you are correcting listen let me tell you this there is no man of god beginning from myself that you will gather his one year message and not find something there that needs deleting adjustment correction or better presentation no man in the world nobody there is no single individual who communicates truth that you carry his one year teaching that you will not find something there that needs complete deleting or adjustment or correction or a better presentation so it is not news if you find out that 
you listen to a man of God, maybe a father of faith or someone, and you see something that needs adjustment, it should not shock you. Are we together? Every time you listen to the message of any man of God, think two things, man and God. Think two things, man, you are not hearing God alone. Uh -uh. In as much as you want to admit it's only God speaking, you are hearing two people, you are hearing God, but the thoughts are being communicated in an earthen vessel. So you will expect the imperfections of the earthen vessel. Listen, 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 listen. Listen very carefully. I just needed to digress to say this so that it will help us. Every time you discover that the thoughts of a man of God are either doctrinally wrong or wrong in presentation, the first thing to look at is the purity of the heart of the communicator. If and when you discover that it is, a, it is, it is an intentional camouflage to deceive, then that becomes a problem. But where you find out that it's just a limitation in knowledge or limitation in communication, you must sustain the intelligence to be able to wave it away and thank God for showing you and then you continue getting blessed from other aspects. Everything cannot be wrong. Are we together now? So you can listen to anybody you choose to listen to and you can decipher whether the error or the imperfections or the inaccurate presentations, it should still not, if you do not understand the message because of that error, you yourself are not growing. Are you learning now? I said this because of this very statement I have said. I have taught you here that while we have the privilege to in love and by the reason of greater revelation, we can look from hindsight and be able to make adjustments over some of the things that our fathers have brought. We too, our own children we are raising, as impressed as we are with all these our revelations, our own children too would check and say, ah, Joshua Selman said this great man, but I think he may not have, by now they would have seen a greater light. Therefore, in approaching anything that has to do with adjustments and correction, there must be love and honor. These two things must never be traded even when you see the truth. Are we learning now? This is very, very important. But I can tell you this. God does not need permission from man to come to the earth. It is still his domain. Under a condition he can create out of his sovereignty, he can still invade the earth. That is true. What God needs, and that is not because he's limited, is because he chose it as his, pre his predeterminate counsel, is man's cooperation and man's participation. We are talking of partnership, not authorization. No. Man does not have what it takes to authorize God. He has what it takes to partner with God as given by the Spirit. Are you getting the point now? So every time you listen to a man of God or you listen to a teaching that talks about permission, just forbear and continue. But now you know what the Bible says. Let me show you one scripture. 135 Psalm. Psalm 135 and verse 6. It says, Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and where? And in the seas and in the deep places. Show me any restriction you see there. The Bible says, whatever the Lord pleased, he did. Whether in heaven or earth, the seas and the deep places. Even man does not know where the deep places are. This is a realm beyond our reach. And the Bible says God has exclusive authority. He can choose as an act of his sovereignty to veto anything. Nobody advised him on how to start creation. He did it as an act of his predeterminate counsel. That's how powerful he is. Are we together? But it is true that nothing legal can and should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and participation. That is the implication of that statement, let them have dominion. Let them have dominion means that God himself, as an act of his will, said anytime I want to do something in the earth, I will need a man to walk with me, not allow me, walk with me. Hallelujah. Let them have dominion means, number three, 
that by reason of that statement man became the most valuable asset in the earth underline or start this statement let them have dominion means that by reason of that divine decree man became the most valuable asset in the earth needed by both god and satan hmm. man not gold is the most valuable asset on earth man not oil is the most valuable asset on earth man not uh, what they call them now platinum and all of these things as much as we price them according to god's divine statement the most expensive asset in the earth today is man every other thing finds its relevance because of the presence of man kill all the men on earth and open the banks kill all the men on in the earth and carry the whole of nmpc only you if you are the only one alive it will not profit you every other thing finds its profit from the presence of man man became the most valuable asset in the earth needed by both god and man isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 very powerful statement and i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send is that in your bible who is speaking the god of heaven whom shall i send and who will go for us then isaiah the man said here am i send me ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30 ezekiel 22 and verse 30 and i sought for a man who is seeking for a man god himself i sought for a man among them that he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that i should not destroy it but i found none luke chapter 22 and verse 3 Luke chapter 22 and verse 3. Satan is also looking for men. The Bible says, then entered Satan into who? It didn't say then entered Satan into the basket. It was demons that entered the swine. Satan was not looking for swine. Satan was looking for a man. When he entered into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, he found relevance because at that point he could now use the authority of man i will show you where listen i've heard people say satan is not powerful no there is no mention of god withdrawing the power satan had but he could not function on earth even though he was powerful what satan cries for in man is not power what satan cries for in man is authority Jesus himself said, I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy. He acknowledged the fact that there is power. Hmm. Are you learning now? Let them have dominion means that man is the most valuable asset. Can you see why messless killings and all this wickedness is an insult? is more than just dehumanization this is the greatest asset that man put on earth man no matter what is in the earth if man is not there the earth cannot rise to its fullness and the prophetic potential that god invested in it gold does not mine itself oil does not mine itself it's man that does that when you talk about the economy is man sociology man psychology man every discussion is about and around man write this down number four what is the implication of that statement let them have dominion is god helping us tonight the implication of that statement let them have dominion All of creation can praise the Lord and should praise the Lord but only man can partner with him to allow his purposes to be done in the earth 
write this down please all of creation can praise the Lord and should praise the Lord but only man you see that only man can allow his purposes and his will to be done in the earth through his partnership this is very powerful allowing the will of God means walking in partnership with him to see to it that his purposes are established this is very powerful Psalm, 50, Psalm 150 verse 6 all of creation can praise the Lord and should praise the Lord but only man can allow the will of God through partnership to be done in the earth 150 verse 6 it says let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise ye the Lord Psalm 69 verse 34 Psalm 69 verse 34 it says let the heaven and earth praise him the seas and everything that moveth therein so the heavens can praise him the earth can praise him the seas can praise him but when it has to do with his will being done the only entity that can work in partnership with him actively legally is man are we together if you will not praise me I will raise up stones he's talking of praising him praising him if you refuse to praise me I will use something else but for 400 years the nation of Israel remained with prophecy hovering around them because one man was not yet prepared and walked upon by God in fact let me show you that scripture Exodus chapter 3 we'll begin our reading from verse 4 I love the Bible when the Lord saw that he turned aside the he being Moses God called him out of the midst of the bush and said unto Moses Moses and he said here I am who is God calling don't forget the God who is calling now the one who owns everything the all-powerful yet he's calling a man verse 5 and he said draw nigh hither put off your shoes from off your feet for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground verse 6 moreover he said I am the God of thy father and the God of thy of Abraham of Isaac and of Jacob and Moses hid his face and he was afraid to look upon God verse 7 watch this and the Lord said I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters for I know their sorrows read verse 8 loud and clear if you're a Christian ready one to read and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians stop there please who has come down Whoa. and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good land we are about to learn scripturally how God comes down are you ready to learn how God comes down verse 9 now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them here's how God comes down verse 10 come now therefore and i will send god comes down by sending men god comes down by sending men i have come down moses come now therefore and i will send you to pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of israel out of egypt the heaven of heavens is the Lord's but the earth has he given man did not get it by conquest God gave but since he gave he now bound himself with that partnership are we together it is not impossible for God to walk without man but he has chosen that as far as the economy of earth is concerned man must be part of that equation that makes anything happen this is very powerful I am come down I am come down dominion on the earth is only for spirits with physical bodies 
dominion on the earth is only for spirits with physical bodies any spirit that does not have a physical body can be around the earth but cannot function effectively and cannot exert dominion until it is invested in a physical body this is very powerful listen please look up this foundation i just gave you ladies and gentlemen it is the principal scriptural foundation for God working with men and men doing kingdom exploits. This is the foundation of occultism. This is the foundation of witchcraft. This is the foundation of anything spiritual. That means when Satan was cast from heaven, watch this. Do you know the judgment of Satan was not just his leaving heaven? because we are not in heaven as that location and yet we are not judged so the judgment was not just in driving him from heaven alone the judgment was in the fact that he was taken to a domain and not given the body that allows for authority are you getting it now you have to understand the scope of the judgment of satan it was not just his leaving the earth but that satan alongside every other spirit that left the earth they were driven and when they came around the domain of the earth they were not given bodies unfortunately god in his intelligence designed it such that there is no other way of manufacturing a human body spiritually there are no fake bodies there are bodies or not I'm not talking of toys that they keep for children to play with I'm talking of a real body God himself designed it look at how he look at how he designed when he made man and made the first body he designed a strict system in man and said let that be the only strategy for bodies to make for continuity do you think if Satan had a way of reproducing bodies without you he will not even disturb you you will just see a wicked agenda continuing so satan's helplessly you drive him and he still comes back is because there is no alternative there is no other way can i tell you why is satan looking for me he will stop looking for you the day you leave your body so when you leave your body he focuses on those who still have their spirits in their bodies are you getting the point now satan does not care whether it is a baby body adult body female body you are the only one arguing it he would do anything this is very powerful when when moses died is it in your bible that archangel michael came to carry the body satan was also fighting because here was an empty body with no spirit inside and he wanted oh my god do you know how many legions would have entered that body you would have seen a resurrected moses who would cause havoc bodies are powerful this body we play with is very powerful believers are trained to honor their spirits and leave their bodies not knowing that what gives your spirit authorization is the body whenever we talk about bodies we hate it we make it look like this is the reason this satanic demonic thing you keep insulting your body till the day there is a separation when that body is deteriorated to a point whether your spirit is prepared or not once it can no longer host your spirit it will leave and unfortunately there has not been any record in scripture where he took another spirit listen carefully no record in scripture where he took the same spirit and put in another body i know that we teach the concept of reincarnation what happened between elijah and john the baptist was not reincarnation 
it was a transference of the spirit and the power one day i will explain it to you i know there are many cultures that teach all those things and science and even psychology has researched people who seem to have lived in other lives and come it's not for me to create this argument i've read it too but i can tell you remember the believers reference is scripture it is appointed unto man to die once and after that i rest my case this is what the bible says so whoever you saw in your dream hold on by this revelation most of the people you see in your dreams are not the people you knew they are just demons trying to use imagery and destroy you you must cast them away is someone learning this is very powerful most believers do not understand the principles of dominion so for dominion to truly happen you need god the giver of that authority you must be a spirit that body must be resident that spirit must be resident in a material body and there must be mind that mind to interface it when that happens you are the one god was talking about now please look up do you know that authority over earth was not given to man under the condition that if he is saved listen carefully when you are saved the authority you have structurally listen carefully over demons and every force that is antichrist that fights god but every human being who lives in a body enjoys this mandate of legitimately functioning on earth whether you are efficient or not is not the issue you have a body that allows you to function are you getting it now and that body is what satan is looking for preferably a body that is not joined to christ because you will understand what the life of god means the bible says that when you get saved the spirit of god comes is your body not the temple not just your spirit there is a joining with the spirit of god in fact ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 when you read the amplified it says finally brethren be strong in the lord amplified it says be empowered through your union with him be empowered through your union with him now please look up i hope you know that the spirits the non-human spirits that are on earth are greater than the population of humans on earth do you know that and do you agree with me the bible lets us know that in the judgment of lucifer one third of the angels fell now we were not given an exact amount but one thing we know based on the character of scripture and then you can see the experience of the man in gadara a legion of demons all in one man even when we come to mount zion there are innumerable company of angels there is no human gathering that cannot be counted on earth but even the angels who are also spirit beings are innumerable not to talk of demons the angels that come to a meeting are innumerable and yet they are not up to one third of the angels that fell what does this mean this then means that the earth is immersed in several kinds of spirits and the principal assignment of most demonic spirits is the search for human bodies they are not just there listen carefully they are not just searching for human bodies to possess alone they are searching for human bodies who can partner with them the devil does not need to possess a human body to use the human body the human body can as an act of your will say satan i want to partner with you the same way you can walk with the holy spirit the spirit and the bride says come so what then is witchcraft and what then is divination and all of these 
ancestry and all of these things satan through manipulation comes to men and now seeks fraternity with their will so let me work with you to complete that dominion equation and he can use it today every manifestation of authority and dominion you see satan exerting he got it from man that means satan will become a powerless only when the last unbeliever on earth dies provided there is one unbeliever whose spirit is not yet joined to christ satan still has a window of opportunity are you seeing why he hates evangelism because for as long as you preach and people come to christ you are reuniting their spirits with the spirit of christ and now that makes it impossible for him to be joined to any human spirit and then second to evangelism he hates the teaching ministry because when you enlighten believers you bring them to a place of understanding he no longer can use their minds please listen very carefully when you call somebody a witch now classically speaking witchcraft has to do with deception i've taught you but there are human entities from scripture and from history who have chosen as an act of their volition when you meet somebody in a shrine and the person tells you i am a wizard or i am practicing occultism what exactly is the person doing i will tell you either by ignorance or by willfully submitting himself he has brought himself to donate that dominion mandate to now partner with the realm of the spirit and satan can use it to cause havoc and give him a momentary succor not knowing that the life of god already provided that however if you ever see dominion on earth it was not outside of the participation the influence and the cooperation of man this is very 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 powerful for as long as the word was in heaven as great as he was and he is not much could be done on earth he used men when it was time for Jesus to come to the earth to die he didn't just come as the spirit of the living God called the word the Bible says the word became flesh now the Bible also shows us that I'm going to make a statement I hope you don't see this as a racist statement in the manufacture of human bodies it is possible for a man to be absent but a woman can never be absent it is possible for a spirit to play the role of planting the seed but as far as adding a material frame to that spirit is concerned it will have to be the womb of a woman that will do that job so the father of jesus it was the holy ghost that played that fatherly role even for jesus this also justifies the fact that there are humanoid species carrying bodies but are not pure humans there is what we call the generation of the serpent i have done a teaching on this There are human beings on earth. This is how far Satan went. I told you, you cannot manufacture a body outside of this. So, studying the whole biology of reproduction, Satan now saw that there is still a window of opportunity where a spirit can play the role of a man and a male. If you understand this, please don't be offended. But if you understand this, you will know where many diseases come from many diseases you see are a reaction by an unauthorized spirit now meeting with a material when a woman's stomach begins to protrude like pregnancy and you find out that something is growing in the similitude of pregnancy but it is not pregnancy and is hurting her and she would tell you i went to bed and a spirit came to sleep with me or do whatever and i got up from the realm of the spirit physically i'm seeing manifestations that are hurting me that is an aberration because for a proper child to come a proper child to come 
it has to be a pure spirit are we together a pure spirit a pure spirit means a spirit from God that has not been unadulterated as far as creation is concerned let me tell you this when you minister deliverance for people you will see that out of every ten about eight or seven are women it's not because they are bad there is an agenda that Satan has and unfortunately the church is very ignorant planting all kinds of things it's in your Bible Jesus said when men went to sleep an enemy came and planted a seed is that in your Bible and they woke up and they began to see two kinds of plants growing one was not planned for the other one was the correct one and Jesus said don't worry let them grow you will know the difference as they mature because if you want to kill all of them at this level you will not know who is who that plant you see he was talking about human beings he shall be like a tree planted so human beings are growing but there is another entity that has come to plant another kind of humans he said don't worry when they get to a state of maturity you will be able to distinguish and you will know i i wish i'm not the person who would teach you this but if you believe everybody on earth is a pure human think again think again what i'm telling you is not news to a traditionalist it's not news to an occultist it's only news to many many christians who do not press to learn let them have dominion let them have dominion over the sea over the air that is the reason why a native doctor can go and sit down and use water and tell you your name is this and everything he's saying is accurate i'll be teaching you by the next series the elements of the supernatural if the supernatural must ever find expression in this realm it cannot be outside of these elements light water the earth wind or sound any manifestation of the supernatural must be in partnership with these elements if you speak in the name of jesus arise this is the power of the air you are taking advantage of it if you bring revelation to people and it changes them that is the power of light are we together now this is very powerful now let me tell you this i submit to you i love the body of christ for most people who are veered off and gotten into occultism in search for power when they go to seek for power these are the same things they teach them the only thing is that because the spirit of god and the spirit of grace is not the one doing this you call a thing divination not because of its accuracy or inaccuracy the spirit that sponsors it matters so even if you are genuinely healed and it's not brought about by the spirit of god it does not bring god glory the holy spirit has to be the originator of that spiritual process and the sustainer of it to bring glory to god i can tell you you all know this go to your village and say i have headache it's not panadol they will give you sometimes they'll say come sit down on this grave stand up after five minutes and you will be surprised headache has gone they use divination to manipulate a correct mystery a correct mystery that can be accessed by light are we together it is true if you want to discuss the subject of dominion your heart must be opened and your heart must be inclined to scripture otherwise you will learn a lot of nonsense you will learn a lot of rubbish but at the same time if you do not learn the principles of dominion you cannot command power in this world many believers are weak because although we are godly we do not know how it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof so what do i do when i go to bed and a spirit just appears and is disturbing me and is threatening me ah in jesus name no it will not happen to me nothing is going to happen under that condition of fear and ignorance there has to be exactitude you need to even understand what is happening why did the spirit come what is the spirit looking for 
and how can you end and close that door once and for all are we together how do I hold money finances and it just disappears from my hand doors of favor closes and then I go to a herbalist God forbid just an example and then you go to that herbalist and he says what do you want money I've suffered and he said all right I know what to do go and bring a chicken go and bring a goat he never said go and bring a business idea go and bring a chicken go and bring a goat he does not care he will not even ask you what are you doing just bring all these things they will slaughter it they will ask you to say a lot of things bring the picture of your child or whoever you love that you must kill and then you bring the person there and then when it does everything drink this do that and you say it's done and you will get up and go and sit down in your shop and human beings will start coming as if something is chaining them and they start buying everything and you're saying it's working then you go and introduce your friend through and it works what did he do to you he didn't bring new products to your shop he did something to the realm of the spirit and took advantage of that dominion of man and programmed a climate the same way too when a man of God stands in partnership with the Holy Spirit and I declare over you and I say in the name of Jesus you see that now understand what I am doing how do you say it will not work Let me tell you the truth if you're a man of God in these end times and you do not understand the mysteries of creation alongside dominion you may not live to finish your ministry I'm not a prophet of doom I am telling you that the end times will demand high level spiritual intelligence understanding the ordinances of the spirit especially if you stand pure to name the name of Christ Satan will use every every law of the spirit within his power to attack you and hopefully separate your spirit from your body so that you do not just get up and see a gentleman who is the breadwinner of a family just goes to school just when he wants to get a job and help the family he just, my head my head and he lies down and that's all and people say ah look at this please there are explanations to this mystery that when you have this understanding you can now say I have dominion and it's not just a cliche you go back and when you are praying you understand authority that there is something you can do to your climate and go to bed and let any spirit cross the circumference of that climate you have programmed laws and left them in the realm of the spirit hallelujah until cctv camera came from a layman's standpoint we did not know there is a possibility to record events around your environment even while you are sleeping someone brought that technology now you have the privilege of going to lie down and even if something happens they can use the cctv system now they use drones and they use this they can literally watch a a very large landmass these things are borrowed technologies from the realm of the spirit read your bible you will never hear any mention of god or jesus getting up to walk around heaven to check who is rebelling he sits on that throne and yet nothing antichrist survives by what technology does he use god has never been threatened to stand up to say someone is fighting me and yet the evil from your heart he detects it and there was war in heaven it was michael that fought not god listen man of God if you do not understand this the devil will weaken your congregation weaken your ministry this end time ministry is a ministry of understanding and authority and power there are many people who do not know this wait until I teach you next week the mystery of altars listen don't miss koinonia next week I'm just giving you a background I want to open your eyes to understand the legitimate systems of authorization in the realm of the spirit nothing just happens everybody's just coming to my ministry my business my company no sir it does not just happen 
whether by divination or whether by spiritual understanding but unassisted you will remain weak i assure you on that when you learn this you can now take charge over your family over your business because you will be learning that territories are made up of altars they are made up of gates they are made up of doors you can be in abuja and yet you are not yet in abuja i've taught you this my dear people you know this more than that apostle have been there for 20 years no if the city does not know you and the region does not know you you will now find out why god had to say hear ye him what is what was the meaning of that statement hear ye him who was he speaking to you will now know why you can stand in the presence of god and call forth a destiny helper because you are standing upon the earth and the earth is a universal point of contact because every human being must make contact with that earth you and the person who you need the help there is something that puts you in common you are all standing on earth one of those elements of the supernatural so you can listen listen we are going to pray but look at me how does someone stand in a coven and a shrine and call someone from America and says you are the one who will be the breadwinner but I command you to come back home and the person just gets up and says I feel like going back and he goes back home and then 10 years later if you say that person has ever gone to the city center they will not believe it and yet the person is there and the person who called him is still sitting on the ground quietly Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? When it was time for Elijah to call down fire from heaven, he would have been surprised if he just stood and said, I am Elijah. The first time he was calling fire, he didn't need anything. He just called fire and it came on men. But this fire he was calling was not just to consume men. There was a mystery. And he said, the first thing I would do, set up 12 stones according to the tribe of Israel. When they set them up, he says, pour water keep pouring water pour water again pour water and when he put everything he said now oh god the earth is already ready let the realm of the spirit respond the bible says fire came it licked everything the goal of my teaching tonight is to reveal three things number one that it is true that the dominion blessing and mandate that God gave man is not a scam it's not fake God actually gave man dominion over earth but that number two it will take God and man in partnership for any divine program to find expression in the earth God limited himself that way it will take God and man, please hear me, God and man for your destiny to rise. God and man for there to be exploits in your life. God and man for your church, your ministry to rise. God and man for your business to rise. If God says yes and man says no, yes remains in the realm of the spirit. But if yes must transport itself to this domain, he must say yes and a man on earth must say yes the spirit and the bride say come from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain yet nobody was saved from that 
the lamb had to assume a mortal human body and he came and worked for 33 years and died a physical death the death of Jesus was not a parable it was not a vision he died truly with blood as the evidence his resurrection was not a vision when he resurrected in glory watch this I have told you one of the major reasons why we believe that Jesus will return is because he went to heaven with his body so whatever will limit him from coming back to the earth has been taken away he does not need a virgin to return back he needed it the first time but now he returned back to heaven and he's seated at the throne as a man so human bodies can transit this realm and they can sit down that's why i know that we can arise and we can also go and as we are going there is a translation in this body mortality will be swallowed up by immortality the bible says you have to know what your christian faith is founded upon if not you will just be nodding oh it's this my pastor said this and yet not have any authority in the spirit as far as you can see it says to you i have given you will now know why we make decrees in the spirit how do you speak about your office right here that you are not you are you are standing here and you are declaring in the name of jesus destiny helpers are coming by what authority are you speaking when satan took jesus up the mountain jesus did not rebuke him if you understand authority eh, it will change your life look at this the Bible says demons tremble and all of that at the name of Jesus but Satan is carrying Jesus in his earth walk and playing with him like toys lifting him up a mountain and telling him bow down to me and I will give you this for it was given to me given by who given by man man did not know that all my manipulations in the garden was to transfer that authority now I have it. I can give it to whomsoever I want. But when Jesus died, when he resurrected, he went to hell first and collected the keys. The Bible says it. That key you see is what we gave Satan access. But now he collected it and he rose again with it. And he gave it back to us. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He says, go therefore. Go with the consciousness of that authority not just the authority by reason of being a human species now authority by being in christ listen when you stand before principalities and powers and tell them i am joshua selman you are talking nonsense mm -mm. you stand there as touching the authority that you represent Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who speaks in the name of our God. Blessed is he who sings in the name of our God. Blessed is he who heals. In the name of our God, we do it in the name of our God. Ah. In the name of our God, Jesus said, In my name, they shall cast out devils. In my name, carry my name as you go with it. In my name, in my name stand in my office as you cast out devils in my name you will know that the name he gave you is not the pronunciation j-e-s-u-s -E there are footballers called jesus their names do not heal in the name hallelujah 
the Bible says wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name the name he gave you is not J-E-S-U-S J-E-S-U-S is the earthly name of the one that name was given to the word name means an office a delegation he was given an office and that every believer in Christ can walk in that office are we together now you can walk in that office and that that office is so powerful listen let me teach you something I'm, I'm rushing ahead of myself we're going to pray by reason of being a human body or wearing a human body listen carefully your function in the earth is legitimate but you may ne not necessarily be efficient your efficiency in the spirit is more than just being a human being you must be joined to christ and you must have that name now the the zone and the scope the limitation of your authority is the limitation of the name so it does not matter whether it is an ancient spirit somewhere it does not matter whether it's an invisible realm somewhere ordinarily as a human being i can only correct and control things within my visible domain but now i have been given a name that took off that boundary are we together now so i can stand and speak and even in the invisible realm hear me the only person who does not submit to that name is God because he was the one who gave the name to Jesus <laughs> ah. of things in heaven of things in the earth read your Bible of things under the earth I hope you know that when he gave man dominion in Genesis 1 26 the scope of it was just earth but now the name read the dominion mandate that was given to the man not the regenerate man in Christ when Jesus came he gave man something more excellent that name you are given has authority and establishes your dominion not just in the earth alone of things in heaven of things in the earth and of things under the earth it's a spiritual location this is the basis because can I tell you every manipulation of witchcraft functions within these three realms the realm of the heavens the realm of the earth the realm under the earth now you have been given a name that gives you immunity is for you to have that understanding if you understand the power of the name so let it not surprise you when you see demons running away because you showed up you are coming in the name you can do business in the name please don't miss next week's meeting the Lord gave me a revelation of altars years ago I did a teaching on the altar of prayer and in it I taught how that you see you will now understand the relevance of things like prayer sacrifice all of these things if you just do them blindly because they said do it you will not get any blessings from it is the reason why many people have done it and nothing has worked for them you will be learning about the mystery an altar is not a demonic word it's a powerful word because the very throne that God is sitting on is an altar the very throne is an altar and he sits upon that altar as many things one of it I'll be teaching you next week is the advocate Shalaka ah. broskedia <laughs> It says we have an advocate with the Father. Even Jesus the righteous. When you understand his power of advocacy, it now brings the cure to causes and bloodlines 
and legal holds there is the ministry of the advocate you need to understand what he does as the advocate hallelujah because there are many believers and I will keep telling you this we can live in denial but you continue to see patterns following people you can you continue to see a lot of things if time allows I will show you in the Bible great people who did not survive they did not conquer the patterns that came with them and they were victims of it including John the Baptist including G Judas I will tell you one of the reasons why they died early when you look at the life of John look at the kind of pain and sorrow the mother had number one they had delay in childbirth is it in your Bible after delay for a long time then John comes and then his whole life of adulthood was in the wilderness and he only manifested for just a few years ordained Jesus to ministry got into trouble and died under the hands of a little girl as a birthday gift add it up is that how God rewards people but that is the power of altars they don't care whether you're a man of God they don't care whether you are a businessman look let me tell you the truth come next week ready to pray we're going to pray a bit you see I'm, I'm wrapping up don't think this time is for you to go home early we're going to take time and pray and pray for God's sake this is the season where you must break out hear me true story years ago a man of God came to see me that was in Zaria and the man of God was saying several things were going wrong in his life and as soon as I sat down I used to sit down counseling that time and suddenly my eyes were open and I saw this strange spirit standing behind him and I was because you know respectfully speaking he was talking very arrogant he didn't look like he was willing to learn anything and I told him I said sir please if you will allow me I want to pray for you I see a spirit he said, no, no 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 don't bring all that thing I just want you to agree with me I said all right how do I help this man now I said all right no problem let's pray I said in Jesus name it was after maybe two three hours that guy got up from the ground he went back and for more than three days he kept sending a text he said apostle you have rubbish my theology I said no that's not the goal I'm only expounding to you the way of the kingdom more perfectly so that you will understand can I tell you most of you by reason of this series honestly you will be surprised to see the things that start happening doors of jobs doors of opportunities hear me help them please help them one of the major things that will be addressed in this series you see is the patterns of sicknesses ill health these mysterious sicknesses you see high blood pressure uh, BP doctors will tell you medicine is being challenged with conditions right now that are defying medical explanations the machine will tell you I am fine but I know something is wrong they put three four five pints of blood in a patient and you don't know the patient did not go to toilet the patient did not is not bleeding and they don't know where everything disappeared to hands that are tied down that cannot move forward women who labor and never eat from their children they don't know why anytime somebody is about to rise and expand those altars come again altars are systems of authorization you don't cast them away no there is a legitimate ground upon which they exist even in the Bible there is something called the foundation of the Lord is it in your Bible listen I have seen by reason of what I do I have seen witchcraft I have seen ignorance I have seen people ignore certain things there is no believer seated who by default 
Now, I respect people's opinion across the body of Christ, but let me tell you this. The things we have seen, the things we have heard, the things our hands have handled, the devil can be silent over you for 30 years and make you feel you are free. But the day that thing will arise, hallelujah i once prayed for a woman there is no single man in her life all the men have just died like that very silly reasons whether you come from the north the south the east the west the middle belt i don't care for as long as you came from the earth this series is for you you will have to sit down and tell yourself it is time to walk in dominion God gave me that dominion I cannot continue to regret where I'm coming from as if it's a cause some of you right now you have even lied and changed your geography where you are coming from because it has looked like such a stigma in your life they say where are you coming from you say Zion I agree I agree in Christ you come from Zion but physically people will find one story do you know people are tearing their indigenous certificates and looking for other regions they think have lesser evils there's no such phenomenon like lesser evil the whole world lieth in wickedness I have seen great people go down I have seen powerful preachers not know how to exert dominion with understanding Africa prays let me tell you the truth if half of our prayer was done with understanding we would have overturned several things now the way we continue to go dissipating energy in ignorance will only bring pain to ourselves it says through knowledge shall the just be delivered when god made that verdict let them have dominion it was not only you that heard it satan heard it the spirits heard it let them the men have created that adam have dominion over the air over the sea these are realms the sea do you know why we'll leave that for another time do you know why it had to be the sea that drowned egypt do you know that it was not land that ate them up? The song of Miriam, remember, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider has been thrown into the sea. There is a particular terrorist in the world who when they killed him, they did not bury him. They threw him in the sea. There is a mystery. This sea you see is very old. There is no human being who is as old as water. Water is one of the three witnesses on earth. Because it does not leave earth, it only recycles. That means what you are drinking, only God knows how many people have, have taken it. The water in your fridge now, it didn't come from water board. It's been recycled from region to region. Forget about the wrong use of it and some of them, you know, the, the extra biblical practices around it. That's not what I'm teaching you. I'm just telling you that there is a very deep mystery. You will be amazed at the testimonies that will come from here. There are some of you who will go to bed and suddenly see spirits appear and say bye-bye. That's it. Bye-bye. Help them please. Bye-bye once and for all bye bye and the moment that happens you will just hear that five ladies that have been buried all of them like that listen i went to preach in shiroro years ago and i remember when i got there i've shared this with you there was a very strange occurrence that i saw that as soon as i don't know if there's a medical explanation but women will give birth and then they will become deaf and dumb immediately after giving birth 
maybe there's a medical explanation i'm not a doctor and i noticed there were a number of them listen one of the things you will be learning huh, is the power altars create patterns you know what a pattern is a pattern is an occurrence that works in circles so you find out that regions have patterns individuals have patterns there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever I have encountered spirits in my life not just angels not just Jesus I have encountered many demon spirits in my life believe me spirits over regions spirits over families spirit over territories and most people do not know there are families under mysterious manifestations the moment someone prospers in that family a dangerous disease is introduced in that family at the same time and the money of the people continue to deplete the person will never die till they become broke by the time that is done and that's the end of it is the reason why we hardly have third or fourth generation anything in africa now i know that there is a major part our thinking and our understanding we have not sadly submitted ourselves to transformation it has its place but to think that lack of mental transformation is the only cause of our problems think again that would be foolish thinking hallelujah the last story i will give you and then we'll begin to pray I had the privilege years ago to visit a gold mine and when I went there we're having a discussion and the locals within that land true story they told me they have a superstition or so around that region they believe that the gold is a living thing and that it moves so before they begin the mining there has to be a medium or a priest a system of appeasal you appease the gold so they say if you don't appease the gold the engineers can come and tell you there is gold here by the next day you will come there and you'll find out that the machines cannot detect it again so literally they had their stories that the golds were moving around so the only way to begin to mine people still do this even in construction today in nigeria there are construction sites before they start as for every digger that hits the ground somebody is dying and one chief will call and say you people are foolish people you went to school but you don't have spiritual intelligence if you keep digging this ground you will die one by one and they will come and meet the person and they will say go and bring one goat in the night now and after they slaughter the person they can do the bridge across the sea because the spirits have been appeased you will see the spirit say who is disturbing us there are people who prosper and spirits come to them and say, I've not eaten and you are eating. We will see who should eat first. And all of a sudden, business that should increase you just goes down. Listen, I will teach you the whole counsel of God. Dominion is not a cheap word. Oh, I, I, I let them have dominion. It is, a, it is a word that thrives on superior spiritual intelligence. Hallelujah. This is what creates an unfair advantage between people. I know the limitations that come by reason of where I come from. I have studied it. I have seen it. It would be stupid for me to deny it. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Are we together? Do you know why Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Did Jesus ever say he's lying? find out why can anything good come out of nazareth there is a track record we see their behaviors was samson not a nazarene 
how did he die was it not the covenant of a nazarene that at the prime of his life he just died he said can anything good in other words this man will not last there is a cause that comes with nazarenes they don't last over anything they are doing please hear what i'm telling you don't say i'm in america don't say i'm in europe i mean that's why you see people respectfully speaking they can spend decades abroad and yet nothing happens to them hear me some of you here you are the only ones now god has brought because as far as your family is concerned until a savior arises there, there will be catastrophe believe me I have seen evil that is under the sun one time I was praying I was in a prayer and fasting program the first time I would encounter a spirit no I was not fasting then I was just praying and behind the place where there used to be a generator I turned there and I saw a spirit and he said get back that's what he told me and the next thing I just started praying in tongues what is this roaming around the earth the second time I was praying and I remember very clearly my 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 roof just disappeared my ceiling and here I'm seeing this spirit that looks like a dinosaur giant eyes looking like human eyes as big as a human head one of the eyeballs and it had a tail the tail had its own life you could detach it fuming with anger and he looked at me and said so you can you want to bring God's people you think you can bring God's people into abundance and that was the end of it after that encounter it was that the gates oh listen may may cause be upon me if i'm lying to you and i'm here to manipulate and deceive you i love you too much to waste your time let me tell you the truth before you think i'm wasting your time i want you to look at your life with sincerity and truth and you will know that you need this it's time to really take dominion if you're a man of God here or the call of God is upon your life please hear me because we are the ones who are most under attack in this season by reason of these altars and the patterns they create just answering the call and being anointed is not enough you don't know this your life and your relevance will be cut short in a way you will not be able to explain but one of the things I'm hoping today and next week will deal with I'm saying it again is the origin of mysterious infirmities blood conditions whatever it is genotype conditions please make sure you invite everybody you love it's time to walk in victory otherwise we'll keep quoting scripture and jumping up and down and our lives will not capture this can i tell you this hear me i made a vow and a covenant with god i said lord whatever it is that comes from my bloodline and my family i obtain grace even if it's for me to be the sacrifice that i will fight it with my life taking advantage of the victory that is in christ so that everyone that comes from me will enjoy that liberty someone may need to make that commitment and say lord my sincere parents my loved ones may have failed because they did not have knowledge but will you use me as that priest let me be that mediator between the old and the new someone rise up in one minute and begin to pray from the depth of your heart Someone pray.
please pray please pray let every other name fade away let every other name fade away till there's no HIV just manifested in their lives like that like from father to children there was no history of that demonic thing but everybody like that I know people who are healthy and sound and fine about to get married they went to do blood tests and they suddenly found out that one person is HIV and the person said, I can't, there is no way this would have come. Medically certified. When everything scatters, they go back and check. And you find out they are perfectly sound. I'd like you to pray and say in the name of Jesus Christ. Say it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare. That no power will contend with my authority. I am a spirit with a mortal body. I am a spirit that submits to the authority of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare. I have dominion in the name of Jesus over the realm of the air, the realm of the sea. Someone is praying. Shabagata barate kete balaka to shoprondos. Ekrete ke barato sodo brenda kete balaka dia. Shakete praska te balaka ta. Embraka ta baraka to shada kete. Pray, something is happening. Pray, something is happening. He bate ka baraka to shkedia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I take my rightful place on earth as God's steward. And I declare, Holy Spirit, I am in partnership with you. Every good thing that must manifest from heaven to my life i declare let it be so now lift your voice and begin to pray i take my place i take my place every good and perfect gift assigned by god to find expression in my life in this season i declare i take my rightful place as God's steward on earth. Shabagada ba gade ba kata brande gade ba la sosia. Ebra katosh kodo brande gade ba lekata. Shabrande gade ba ruskiata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, every system of authorization working against my life, my family, my destiny, by the blood of the eternal covenant, be silenced now. Open your mouth and pray. Be silenced. 
Be silenced. Be silenced. Shekete pakata balakatosh. Embrekete katapa roskotopa. Be silenced. In the name of Jesus. Systems of authorization. Fighting your influence. Fighting your destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now hear me. This prayer you are about to pray, many miracles are going to come out of it. Say in the name of Jesus, I declare that this body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, every sickness and infirmity in this body programmed to waste my life I command depart now open your mouth and pray depart fibroids depart high blood pressure depart cancer depart someone pray tumors growths depart belakatosh kadila pariata Blood conditions depart. Shagata bagata bagatos kate. Embre de gabaruso segate balatos. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare from today that I have a covenant of longevity my body will never separate from my spirit until my time is done every premature separation either by accident by sickness by the activity of wicked people I cause it right now Go ahead and pray. No premature separation coming in the form of accidents. hallelujah in the name of jesus please don't be distracted jeremiah 22 29 please give it to us quickly jeremiah 22 verse 29 it says "O earth 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 hear ye O earth 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 it says hear ye the word of the lord the earth is a universal point of contact the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread it says the profit of the earth is for all and even the king is fed by that which comes from the earth i'd like you to pray say in the name of jesus my portion given to me by god i decree and declare through the ministry of man let it gravitate towards my destiny open your mouth and pray god is a god of portions god is a god of portions pray god is a god of portions Hallelujah.
say in the name of Jesus, every negative inheritance that has been transferred to me by those who were before me, I decree and declare by the blood of the Lamb, I reject it right now. I reject it. Go ahead and pray. Every negative inheritance, inheritance that has come as untimely death, negative things, closed doors, I reject it. Someone pray. I reject it. I reject it. I reject it. In the name of Jesus, I reject it. Shabagada Barakos Abrakatos Kateba Lakatesh Hallelujah. Listen. The implication of having dominion over the realm of the air, the realm of water, the realm of earth is that no element that comes from these sources should work against you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Judges, I, I, I was quickly trying to look for the scripture Judges chapter 5. I hope I get it right. Let's look at 19 and 20. This was Deborah and Sisera. Judges 5. The kings came and fought. I hope I got. Then fought the kings of Canaan in Tanakh by the waters of Megiddo. And they took no gain of money. Verse 20. Yes. It says they fought from heaven. The stars in their courses fought against Sisera. Can I tell you, the elements of nature can hearken to the voice of those who know their God and can stand in partnership. Hold on. That means if someone goes to use the earth against me or pronunciations that go through the wind or water, provided is one of these elements. Did the Bible not say the sun shall not smite you by day? nor the moon by night say in the name of Jesus I speak to the elements of creation hear the word of the Lord walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the word of God for my favor for my destiny not against me open your mouth and begin to pray the elements of the supernatural I decree and declare the sun shall not smite me by day the moon shall not smite me by night the scourging tongues of men shall not catch up with me I have dominion over the air dominion over the sea dominion over the earth Pray.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be tired. Genesis 1 from verse 20. I want to show you something about the mystery of this water you see. Are you ready? And God said, let the waters do what? Bring forth abundantly. So water is connected to abundance. And water in scripture means men too. Are we together? It is not just about physical water. Water is also prophetic and symbolic of men. It says, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life. The fowl that it may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. 21. Let's read together. One to read. And God created the great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly. Hold on. We are going to declare the prayer of abundance. Waters here does not mean going to do enchantment with water. Water here means men. Are we together? Water. Prophetic. That means everybody's abundance is in the hands of men. And the Bible says God can issue a command and those men can release it abundantly. Say in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the abundance assigned for my life, for my assignment through the ministry of men. I declare let it be released unto me. Go ahead and pray. Let the waters bring forth abundantly. Someone pray, someone pray. Let the water spring forth abundantly. Shabra gade balaga de prosko do balando shaliatas. Egre feneke te parato shada braga dala katosa prayers. Hallelujah. Psalm 79 verse 11. Psalm 79 verse 11. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. Death it's an appointment. I can reject an appointment that you give me. We can fix an appointment for 12. And I can choose to reject it. Is that true? Please look up. For there to be an appointment, it means there must be some sort of consent, even if not mutual. There has to be an awareness. Okay, you go to apply for a visa. You expect an appointment. There is an understanding between you and the, the, the consular officers that there is an appointment. So when the Bible talks about an appointment, it means someone represented you for that appointment to be fixed, even if you are not there. Like a man can go to get an appointment for all his children, and they just know that your appointment is on the 25th. So when the Bible says there are people appointed to die, it may be that they through ignorance have signed in for that appointment or someone before them 
already made the appointment in the name of Jesus Christ every appointment whether by covenant whether by ignorance or by disobedience with the spirit of death I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant help them please let it be cancelled now open your mouth and pray by the greatness of your power preserve those who have been appointed to die someone pray by the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah in the name of Jesus we have one last prayer please look up and this prophetic prayer is dedicated to Nigeria listen carefully you see this onslaught of terrorism and the rest go and read the book of Esther you will find out that Haman and the plotters of evil they consulted by divination and they were given a date when they will attack I can tell you this for sure no terrorist attacks at will no they consult with the constellations and they make incantations until the heaven gives them a go that's why it looks like it is effortless regardless army regardless whatever I say it with all due respect to all the forces who are doing their best but there has to be a spiritual advantage can I tell you the truth if you approach spiritual things just with your head knowledge or with strength you will be a victim of several casualties it is not like satan and terrorists are so powerful their advantage is not in their physical armory i tell you this their advantage is that they have mastered through divination the art of manipulating the realm of the spirit and it is good for us to pray but for God's sake prayer in ignorance is the same thing as not praying hallelujah so they set a date and even though her man was dead the decree of the date for destruction still continued it took another decree to change it the Bible says where the word of a king is he says there is power he said declare ye that thou mightest be justified if you refuse to plant in a farm something will still grow the name is weed in elementary science or agriculture they define wheat as weed as unwanted are we together unwanted plants while men slept hear me we are going to make decrees every element of the supernatural that has been manipulated to work supporting evil and death and bloodshed in this nation in this city and around please don't say it does not concern you don't make the mistake of esther when her man was plotting evil esther was enjoying the delicacy of the palace and mordecai sent a warning he said do not think if you are silent that when they are done with us you will be spared for you do not know whether it is for such a time as this everyone who has been kidnapped even those killed they were sincere people who got up in the morning just like you don't forget that you have not you have not stopped moving you too move out in the morning and in the night so don't say it does not matter shout this from the depth of your heart say in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I take my place as one who has authority and I decree and declare the spirit of bloodshed the spirit of terrorism the spirit of oppression around our land the spiritual power that supports you we break it right now go ahead and pray the covenants that support you be broken the altars that support you be broken the enchantments that support you 
be broken the priesthood that supports you be broken we prophesy to the north we prophesy to the south we prophesy to the east we prophesy to the west in the name of jesus we declare the ministry of angels may they excel in strength by the word of the lord we declare this by the decree of the watchers in the name of jesus christ there is no rest and no peace for evil hallelujah hallelujah let me just add this one last one you are going to declare prophetically safety and preservation over everyone who is connected to you listen listen you have to reject bad news between now and december you, you, your your destiny is not ready for some kind of news that will depress you and waste your time it is within your power yours is to stand in your position with your delegated authority and with understanding and to make decrees are we together you are going to mention the name of everyone including yourself and declare the bible says the name of the lord is not only a weapon of victory it is a strong tower the righteous can enter and they are saved begin to mention the name of your loved ones your spouse your children your parents lord we declare covering prophetic covering they are exempted from the arrows that fly by day exempted from the noisome pestilence the destruction that wastes in noonday a thousand shall fall by your side ten thousand by your right side none shall harm you with your eyes will you see and the reward of the wicked hallelujah let me make one decree over your life and we're done revelations 3 and verse 8 revelations 3 and verse 8 let's start from 7 and 8 revelations 3 to the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true and had the key of david he that openeth and no man did you see that so who are those that shot who are those that shot and who are those that open he had the key of david he opened it that means if you don't have the key of david you can open a door that a man can shut you can shut a door that the man can open but it says he that had the key of David and by the mystery of the key of David that a door can be opened that no man can shut and shut and no man can open verse 8 it says I know thy works behold I who has the key of David I have opened before thee he says i have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it because i acknowledge that you have little strength yet with your little strength you have kept my word and you have not denied my name i stand in partnership with the holy spirit and according to revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8 i decree and declare upon you that door that has been set may it be open and remain open Doors of favor be open and remain open. Doors of lifting be open and remain open. 
doors of restoration be open and remain open doors of opportunity be open and remain open doors of speed be open and remain open hear me i release this prophetic word let it follow you like your shadow that any human vessel in partnership with any spirit that wants to shut this door may this prophetic word judge them i say it again any human being that wants to shut the door that the hold of the key of david has opened Makesh Kalibaratasiata. May this prophetic word judge them. Some of you, by reason of these open doors, things that have been hanging that you have just been seeing but will never come to your hand in the name of jesus let it enter your hand finally for in jesus name we pray please wave your hands to jesus wave your hands to the king of kings the giver of all good things in jesus name i pray now please listen, listen, I, I want you to be disciplined as God grants grace. We are touching something very serious and sensitive in the realm of the spirit. So may I request that you devote some extra time in prayer. Don't just hear this and go back, not out of fear. You are taking advantage of this and you are praying. What are you praying? Declaring your dominion. Before you go to bed, you declare by the Spirit, in the name of Jesus, I declare, the lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. Don't think it is a childish thing to do. You declare over your ministry, your life, declare over everyone. Finances, if you are sick in your body, let this be your approach throughout this week. In the name of Jesus, I declare that by his stripes, I am healed. On Sunday again, please, I beseech you by the mercies of God, we are waiting upon the Lord. I know it may not be easy, but God will grant you grace. Are we together? It's better for you to push through and walk experientially in total victory. Please, whatever you do, let me speak especially across the body of Christ and all who are connecting. I want to teach you something as we look at part two. Please, come and learn about the mystery of altars i want to teach you spiritual systems of authorization how you can unlock and unlock mysteries and you will be surprised at the things that will change in your life the lord brings this word because he loves us and he brings this word because the set time has come in the name of jesus christ if you are not born again you are in trouble simple there is no need wasting your time if you are not born again after all this please hold on let's respect the lord and not move around what every time we talk about salvation there are people who already by default there are altars and causes and all kinds of things that stand you cannot afford to ignore jesus so i am making an altar call for those who came for the first time those who have been around and you are saying apostle i truly need to be delivered from the power of darkness and to be translated into the kingdom of his dear son number two there are those who are saying my life is not the way it should be i need rededication i need to hand over everything properly to jesus i'm going to count one to five please very boldly i want you to leave your seat and run and come and stand here at the count of five i'll begin to pray koinonia celebrate them one Please run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Two. Be lifted high. 
we lifted high come for your glory be lifted high be lifted high be lifted high for your glory three if you're coming please come quickly Apostle, I want to come, but I think I'm saved. I'm not sure. Join them quickly. There is no such thing as not sure. You are saved or not. If you are not sure, join them and verify right now. Jesus being here, you can know for sure that you are saved. He said, ye must be born again. Now, please lift your right hand. I salute you for coming, all of you and those who are watching uh, online by way of internet. Thank you for your bold decision. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Appreciate your courage to come and stand before Jesus himself. He is able to fix our destinies and to give us new beginnings. Say this loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Those who are coming, please, if you are coming for the altar call, please run. Help those under the anointing. Um, the confession is important. It's not just coming to the altar. If you come to the altar and the only thing you say is amen, you are not saved. You are sincere, but you are not saved. That, that prayer of confessing the lordship of Jesus and receiving him in your heart is very important. All right, so let's say this. Say in the name of... Oh, no, I, I thought I'm, I'm confessing and declaring the word. Are you ready now? Are you settled? Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you died for me and I confess with my mouth that you were raised from the dead right now I declare that I am a child of God washed by the blood of the lamb I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King from tonight and forever I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them even by your spirit and I thank you because the Bible declares that no man comes to the Father except through the Son. I decree and declare. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you